So, Seamus, do you remember the Epic Game Store? Oh, yeah, that was a game store that, like, had no no features in it, but it had free games all the time. I remember that way back before the pandemic. Yeah. And then, like, during the pandemic, they stopped releasing free games for a while, just so that nobody Did would they? come back. I, yeah, I don't know what that was about. Okay. So anyway, before they stopped releasing games, way back like a year ago or whatever, I picked up a game called Inner Space and uh, for free. And I finally it, got around to playing it because I was like, man, I should I should play some of these games. Wait, Inner Space? That's weird. That's a that's a nineteen eighty that's a late nineteen eighties sci fi movie starring Oh yeah? Uh starring Martin Short and Dennis Quaid. Uh, it, it's, a uh, it's, a uh, Dennis Quaid gets shrunk down in, in to be molecule sized and injected into Martin Short due to a misunderstanding in the lab. And so then Martin Short has Dennis Quaid rolling around in his bloodstream. Um, <laughs> uh, it's semi funny. I remember being charmed by it at the time and then finding it absolutely completely not funny. Uh, you know, when I watched it a few years later, like it was funny because I was a teenager, not because it was any good. Ah, but this has nothing to do with being, is this a game about getting injected into, into Dennis Quaid? Cause that's interesting. No, I, I, is, I, it, uh, is it a I, game about being Martin short? It seems like it might have been a better game. You know, all those games that are released for free on on the Epic Game Store tend to be not quite top notch. You don't say. Um, so it's it's a game about. It, I think the contrast they were trying to draw was with outer space, where this is like an enclosed space, but you're flying around exploring. Um, it's it takes its its narrative a bit too seriously, and it's narrative is not very extensive so I, i'm not sure I'm not sure how they're how much they're leaning on it throughout the whole game but i didn't get very far into it, it it's a flying around game it leans a lot on its flying mechanics but the flying controls are not very intuitive oh no so that's not great i mean there's a reason that's like free. being a platformer but the platforming controls are not so good like that's the one thing you need to get right yeah come on meat boy so anyway, I just want to say I played that game. I played a whole bunch of games the week before last, and then I played a, a few more games this past week. And so I've just got like a whole bunch of games that I played. So I just mentioning I played Inner Space. It is okay if you like flying around. Uh, maybe it would be better with a joystick. Right. All right. I found a gem on YouTube, and I I try not to do that. It is very easy to turn your blog into nothing. But here's a thing I found on YouTube. Okay, that is just, I sense how easy that is to make something that a will vaguely amuse people, but doesn't really add value to their life. Um, hey, and then I and can make it into a video and put that on YouTube. Right. But I don't want, you know, something that's just low effort. Here's a link to something else that someone else made. So I always resist the urge. This happens a lot. I'll be like, oh, this was good. But I'm, I'm not going to share it on my blog because that's just stupid. And if I do that every time I have that in impulse, my blog will be nothing but YouTube link dumps. Yeah. But this one really made me happy. It's a couple of... I've never seen this YouTube channel before. I don't think it's particularly big. I mean, it's probably bigger than me, but it's not like, you know, this isn't, you know, YouTube stars. But it's sure. uh, a couple of guys playing through a badly translated... Um, through Portal, the original Portal from, I don't know, 2011 or whatever. But the... Um, Everything has been machine translated. Even that somebody even went to the trouble of like all of the signage went through the translator and then they, you know, like a, a texture, they put in the text of the texture, had it translated, and then they made a replacement texture for it. So even wow. the signs on the walls um, are machine translated. 
and it was it was very funny and very strange and so there will be a link to that in the show notes i had the opportunity to watch a little bit of it and it doesn't seem like yeah i mean it was it, the game was originally in english and the video is shown in english so it's clearly translated a lot of times to get it to be weird like this right right at one point it um when you're dealing with your companion cube it goes on there's a whole block of text where glados they oh the other thing they had to do is they had to record themselves reading all the voice lines for the characters so one of them had to be you know and they just like okay i'll be glados and they you know pitch shifted their voice up and read the read the ridiculous lines and, and there's a the whole, whole thing right and there's something about you know to be installed on your android device now i know in that part of the game there is Maybe it's just after the companion cube. Anyway, I know there are references to androids, but ah. that's really, I you know, I know it's something about androids in that part of the game, but that's interesting that it, from that one word android, it sort of extrapolated this entire phrase to be installed on your android device. Oh man. Well, because it was like android hell, right? Right. Something about android hell. And it was supposedly addressing androids as they did the course. Yeah. Ah, oh, strange. I, I noticed too that all of this, the not subtitles, but like the effects descriptions are also weirdly worded. Oh, right. If you have turned on subtitles and it's like portal sound or door opens those are all also translated so the whole thing is just surreal and you find yourself wondering what was the original text here what could this have... uh, at one point it calls the companion cube the heavyweight boxer <laughs> and um you know you just you want to solve that puzzle like how what sort of translation madness led the companion cube or you know some some reference to this thing being your friend turned it into the heavyweight boxer well it's probably the weighted companion cube right you're right you're right the weighted companion cube heavyweight <laughs> box it's a box it's a it, box it's... oh no <laughs> companion cube yeah it's it's a box the heavy box oh, the man. heavyweight well, box I, i'll or... have to watch through this thing sometime it it's kind of sad that well the kids played a little bit of portal but most of the jokes went over their head they're just like this narrator is not very helpful i'm trying to solve this puzzle <laughs> kind of like having someone who's never played rpgs play undertale right it's like I don't know right. why this person is doing all these puzzles for me. What's going on? Do they watch like Star Wars and go, this guy in the black cape is not very nice. He's <laughs> not helping anybody. He needs to go to a timeout. No, they've actually, they've actually never seen Star Wars. I don't think I can need to, <gasps> we need to move on from this topic. This is getting, yeah. it's getting very embarrassing for me. Yeah. 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 People, people will accuse you of horrible things. Okay. Moving on, moving on. Okay, so uh, I that, also played yeah. free game. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Isaac, I think only recently saw Star Wars. He was just you know, uninterested in it for years. So, like, there's this thing with people born after 2000 don't care about Star Wars the way we did. Anyway, well, go ahead. Know, the prequels came out and just ruined everything. Right. Isaac does quote the Phantom Menace review from Mr. Plinkett constantly uh, oh yes i think that's he saw that before he ever saw the prequels or the originals? and in fact possibly and we still will be wow. talking about we'll be talking you know i'll open up some game and it's really comp you know i'll open up crusader kings and i'll be looking at the interview interface and i'll be like i don't know what to do and he'll be like it's just so dense <laughs> anyway oh, i really, i stepped on your topic really good reviews 
So, uh, so speaking of, of knights and, and uh, things, there's um, another free game, Kingdom Come Deliverance, which I I'd heard good things about, and so I I picked that up for free again maybe a year ago, and I finally got around to playing it, and it's not bad. It's it's a very interesting, a very medieval feeling. You know how like a lot of RPGs are like they've got some medieval settings, but then they've got like the general store where you can buy like swords and stuff. And it's like, right. what is this? This isn't, this, this doesn't make sense. Right, right. Yeah, just a place in the middle of a village where they just sell tons of swords. Somebody dedicated standing there all day selling swords. Right. So like, like Kingdom like Come Deliverance has a very, it feels very in the time. Like all the floors are dirt floors and or not all of them but like a lot of them are dirt floors in your house right and there's like a pot in the corners just like you know mash or whatever and you throw whatever food you want in there and then it keeps it from going bad just like things like that right where it's like oh okay this is how people used to live you know like it's very very earthy and there's like the charcoal burner that sells charcoal and there's like the you know the, the one little tavern and they've got the benches outside it's just you know very it feels very real um very whatever i'm not sure 1200s or 800s or something whatever the sure. time period is very authentic in a way that like skyrim is not yeah yeah it's not a fantasy setting it's like a real life set in hungary setting right and, so and that's that what i'd heard about fun. it that's what i'd heard about it too it's actually in my my library it's actually installed and I've nearly played it many times, but like I've said on the blog, I'm burned out on, I said I've, I'm burned out on medieval fantasy, but I'm just burned out on medieval settings, right? Like yeah. horse riding and villages and peasants and kings. I'm just, yeah, I've it, just it's done super so medieval, it. super duper medieval. Right. Right. And so this is kind of the distilled, this is everything I'm tired of. So even though I yes. find it really, really interesting, somebody going for that, you know, sort of recreation of of medieval times as opposed to, you know, wizards and and the yeah, wizards and rogues and knights, you know, this world that never existed, this recreationist thing is very interesting, but I've never played it. I've played it a little bit. I never, I haven't quite got to the part. I played for maybe a couple hours, got through the tutorial twice because I messed up. So I was, I was, you're supposed to sneak in this guy's house. You're supposed to do this quest and you can, as part of the quest, sneak in this guy's house. And it's like, be careful, don't get caught or that you'll get arrested. And so I was like, ah, well, whatever. And so I go up and I was like, okay, now pick the lock. I'm like, oh no, how do I do that? I have never done this before. So I'm in the middle of like trying to learn the lock picking mechanics. And it's not just a simple, like hold down the button. You have to like align the thing and move it around right. and. I like the idea and that the, your character behind me. I like the idea that your character decided to begin exploring the world of block picking impromptu. <laughs> it's just like this seems like a good time to learn on this on this stranger's yeah. house. Yeah. Well, it's part of a quest, but it's like, yeah, I would have it seems like it would be a good idea to practice before trying it for real. Uh so the tutorial setup there maybe wasn't the best. Maybe they were just trying to introduce me to like being arrested. I, I don't know what happens if you're arrested because the guard showed up. Or just, the, the, so the guy walks into his house like, hey, you're picking my lock. Don't do that. And he runs out and gets a guard. And I'm still in the middle of like picking the lock because I'm like, all right, I've got to figure this out. And I don't know how to escape from the lock picking menu. And so right. then the guard shows up and he's like, you're under arrest. And so there's some options of like, you know, uh, fight him, uh, pay the fine, argue, or run away. I'm like, run away sounds good. And so I start running away from the guard. He's like, sure, whatever. He's going to de-aggro eventually, right? No, he doesn't. This is not like an RPG. This is not like, you know, you just run far enough away and he forgets you exist. Like, this guy knows who you are. He lives in your town. He's not going to forget you. So, so I run <laughs> back to my house and I shut the door and he somehow can't figure out how to open the door. And so he's like, I know you're in there. But he doesn't like knock on the door or whatever. And so eventually he goes away. I was like, all right, good. Whew. Dodge that bullet. So then I go downtown. I'm doing some other quest stuff. I talk to my girlfriend. I get a drink for my dad. And then like I exit that menu, the dialogue menu, and he's standing there. The guard's standing there. He's like, you're under arrest again. I'm like, oh, no. 
He remembered. <laughs> he didn't forget. <laughs> And but so that then, was yesterday. So was How like, could he possibly remember back that far? Right, exactly. <laughs> He's like, uh, I found you again. So then I'm like, okay, well, I'll run away again. I probably should have been like, I give up, you know, and, and like it would have told me something about being arrested or I would have had to, I don't know. I don't know what would have happened because I ran away again. Only this time I was further away from my house. And so he clubbed me on the back of the head enough times that I died. And so uh, then I restarted the tutorial. That's amazing. I love it. That is a great story. All those other so, video games. It's a good have, game. Have, yeah. All those other video games have made us terrible at the medieval world. <laughs> right. Well, or even even like our expectations of how people behave in games. Right. Right. Our expectation of how crime works and how, how law enforcement. And that's hard. I've said before that that is just the most infuriating... Um, chase the problem or like you can continue to spend more and more and more money on law enforcement things like you know you can look at any medieval game or any game at all where it is possible for you to commit a crime that is not scripted by the game i'm not talking about like grand theft auto where you do a heist i'm talking about a game where you can steal arbitrary items yeah. As soon as you have that in the game, it and there will be something stupid about it, but it makes no sense. Like, people will not recognize the stolen goods, or they w they'll either not recognize the, the yeah. sword you stole an hour ago, or they will recognize the apple you stole last month. Yes, yes. <laughs> and... and you know, you could keep adding more and more layers and making it more and more complicated, but that will just move the stupid around. You, you won't fix this until you're like simulating the brains of every individual villager and how they communicate with each other about recent events around town. Yeah, I, I think the way it works is if no one sees you steal it and if it's not like a an identifiable item, then you can get away with it. But I... Yeah, I don't know. I did kill some chickens, just like randomly, and nobody seemed to care about that. You heard about the bug in Skyrim at launch that had to do with chickens? Oh, I, I forget what it was, but I do remember there's something. The chickens were able to, because they were considered villagers, um, oh, and yes. they were, they they were aligned. Crimes. Yeah, they could witness a crime and go tell a town guard. And they'd come and yes. they would hear about it from the chicken. Like that's the sort of, that's the sort of, yeah. okay, I think I fixed the problem. No, wait, now we have chickens reporting crimes. Yeah. The simulationist <laughs> uh, wagging the dog thing. Right. Where just like, no matter how much stuff you add, you just have it break in new and more inventive and surreal ways. Uh, so anyway, Kingdom Come Deliverance, it was a fun time. What games have you played recently? I picked up Final Fantasy XII during the Steam Summer Sale. Ooh. I don't know about that. Like, Final Fantasy X, I loved. It was my first Final Fantasy game. And I thought it was stupid and ridiculous and just so silly and weird. But I loved it. I loved that energy of just everybody's dressed like an idiot. Nothing makes sense. And we have a bunch of teenagers trying to save the world and they can barely handle their own emotional baggage. Like that's right. right. I, I loved it. And Final Fantasy 12 does not feel like that at all. It feels like if, you know, everybody in the party's an adult, they're mostly dressed sensibly. Um, a lot of it's about politics and it's a bit. So I remember feeling very negative about it at the time when I played it, you know, in the early aughts. I don't know when it came mm. out. Yeah, so it came out in twenty two in 2006. So I probably played it sometime in 2007, way back when the blog was very young. And I remember not liking it. And I remember fans of the series explaining to me how I didn't know what I was talking about. And, and I'm silly, and this is one of the best ones. But then over the years... 
this game seems to have sort of been forgotten. Pe when people talk about their Final Fantasy favorites, this game never comes up. So I'm like, was I just not on the right wavelength to get this game? Or was I missing something? And so mm -hmm. I've played like the first three hours of it. And I still like, this is so weird. It doesn't feel like Final Fantasy. Ah, well, that may be your, that may be your mistake because every Final Fantasy game has, I mean, they have themes running through them that are similar, but they also have widely varying experiences. Right, right. Like I've played Final Fantasy seven and eight and I'm like, okay, those are very different from each other and they're both different from 10, but all of those games you could, if you made a Venn diagram of some attributes they would all land, you know, they would all land in, in circles together, mm -hmm. in multiple circles together. And then Final Fantasy XII is very much doing its own thing with regards to music and character design and world building. And the combat system is now real time. And my, the whole time I'm playing it, I'm just thinking, what do people think of this today? So I'm honestly curious like what do final fantasy fans think of 12 today if you're a fan there was a, a really gargantuan post i i could be mistaken but i think it was by the rocketeer on your forums and i think it was about 12 um and how final fantasy 12 if i'm summing up correctly is like a subversion of the common themes of the final fantasy series or something like that um, I don't, I don't remember it in entirety and I can't go back and look at it because the forums are still down, but it's, yeah, uh, I don't know what the deal is or who's in charge of that, but they have been shirking their duties for too long. Maybe he can repost it in the, in the comments below all like 20,000 words or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I, well, the Rocketeer also, when I did my Final Fantasy X write up. He honestly, like, this isn't me just being nice that somebody participated on my website. He honestly ran circles around me in the comments. Every time he posted to the comments, it was, it was an analysis of the part of the game that I was analyzing, except way more incisive and also funnier. <laughs> it was like a second and blog post, too. Right, right. And I've often like, I want to save those comments. I want to make sure that those are like, I want to like elevate them somehow, make them part of the posts or something, <laughs> move them up into the post body so that more people see them. Because I know, uh, especially today, people that dive through the archives don't generally read the comments. They just, yeah. you know, read the article and then you get to the bottom of the article and you hit the next button to read the next article. And the stuff from Rockets here is so good. I want more people to read it. Uh, I recently ran through, like recently <clears throat> when I bought Final Fantasy XII, that made me remember this series and I went back and reread it. But I was really just like going to the bottom of every post and rereading Rocketeer's series. His, his you already ahead. know what you think, but his, right. like, yeah, he's got a different perspective from it. Anyway... For anybody that has played this game, I'd love to know what you thought of it in the comments. Like, I can look up reviews, but I feel... I want to know what people think of it today. Not what did people think of it in 2006. Like, how has this a game aged? And what do people think about it now with... My goodness, has it been 17 years? No. What? 15. No, 15 years. Oh, Wow. They don't make them quite as quickly as they used to. What What's Final Fantasy on these days? Like 15 now? Yeah, I don't know. They Right after 12, they began a trilogy. Um, oh, of, yeah. There was the one was where like the... Some sort of online MMO trilogy. Right. Well, no, waifu, yeah, there was dress the... up game or something. <clears throat> yeah, there was the... There was the MMO and then there was the three... The, then in the single player space... There was a trilogy where each Final Fantasy was just a continuation of Lightning's story. And I don't know anything about her or her story. And I 
I never wanted to like check out a you know a trilogy of games like that. Like one of the appealing things for me about Final Fantasy is you go in, you play the game, and you're done. That's the story. Mm -hmm. I like that when you're done, you're done, and it's not going to keep pulling you along. Oh, where it's, what's Gordon Freeman going to get up to next time? What's he going to do about the combine or? What's Master Chief going to do about this? And then tune in next. <laughs> tune in next console. Yeah, tune in next console generation to get the next update. And I'm like, no, I, I want to consume an entire story and have that story be done and feel like I have finished the story. And not get burned and, like with Mass Effect. Right, especially uh, considering how bad video game developers are with continuing stories like oh we're gonna make this part and then we're gonna make a sequel to it but then oh wait our publisher has assigned us to do this movie tie-in and the property gets handed off and somebody else is doing the sequel now and they don't care about the sequel you set up they want to do they want to do their own thing they want to do completely their own thing so like Anytime somebody tries to tell an ongoing saga within video games, it is doomed to be a mess because, you know, creative, t this time space that games happen on, the games come out on, you know, it's not like movies where you can have one every year or every other year. It's more like every four years, every five years. It's an entire console generation later. That's too long to wait too long to remember what happened in the previous one by the time you get to the sequel and it's so long that the team itself will have turnover and you'll have different creative people that don't want to tell that story anymore so it's terrible so like just don't do it just make every game self-contained ideally in an ideal world right uh, but yeah uh you know pretty much with the playstation 2 generation they started messing around with sequels Final Fantasy X, the one game that absolutely should never have gotten a sequel, got a sequel. Lightning <laughs> got a trilogy. Yeah, Final Fantasy X, man. That 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 was a self... That's like making a sequel to Lord of the Rings. Oh, look, everybody. Frodo's back from the Grey Havens. Get out of here. <laughs> but why? <laughs> right? What are we going to do at the end of this one? Send him back? Sauron's getting the band back together. <laughs> Turns out Sauron has has a little brother, Sauramin. <laughs> oh, he's not prepared. Okay, so I, we got to get to some mailbags. So I'm going to run through these games. I picked up a bunch of games on the Steam Summer Sale, um, and they're all fine. Deep Rock Galactic, it's lots of um, multiplayer fun, single player fun. I, I really like the... Um, the visual aesthetic, it feels very Nomragon from um, World of Warcraft, and uh, I love it. Um, Sunless Sea, very moody. I don't really like the mood, but if you're into, like, spooky eeriness and Victorian kind of London-y stuff, then that's that's cool. Venoneth, I heard about it from Aaron Signal, Chris, and uh, it's just like he showed in his video, so if you liked what you saw, it's a fun game. And the Outer Worlds uh, RPG, I was played through it uh, maybe ten hours or so, and uh, it's it's an RPG for sure. And I'll, I'll probably get back to it at some point. And then right now I'm on Dyson Sphere program, and that has hooked me. Um, so yeah, factory games are are something else. I I've been hearing good things about Dyson Sphere program. I kind of I checked it out. But I didn't get very far with it because I was in the middle of playing Factorio. Yeah. This was a couple months ago, but everything people were saying about it made it sound like if I get far enough into this, that's all I'm going to be doing for the next several months. <laughs> you, you need to, you're like, it's, it sounds like one of those games to trap. You're like, this is interesting. This is interesting. This is interesting. Oh, oh, suddenly it's a week later and I haven't slept. And I've stopped eating. And my family doesn't recognize me. And I don't care because I just need to keep playing. So, yeah. I, 
I'm betting, I'm betting I just haven't set off that trap yet, but it's still there waiting for me. The only thing that I'm missing is templates, um, build templates. I don't think they have them. Literally unplayable. Yeah. Negative one stars. Right. All right. Let's, uh, you want to do some mailbags? Yeah. Let's knock them out. You go ahead and take this first one. Dear Diecast. I don't know if that's necessary, but spoiler alert for Dragon Age series. In Dragon Age Inquisition, our character met Hawk, the main protagonist from the previous game. He could also receive a letter from the hero of the first game, the Warden. It seems that Bioware really likes the idea of meeting your own character as an independent NPC, something that can sort of happen in Star Wars The Old Republic. There are also similar ideas in Mass Effect 3, Citadel. Last but not least, developers are actually trying to bring the Warden in Inquisition in person, but determined it was too difficult to do. So speaking of RPGs in general, do you think it's possible to create such situations in which we would be able to interact with our characters from previous games without ruining the player's agency? I'm specifically thinking about the ones that are mostly created by said players, e.g. more like the Warden and less like Hawk or Shepard. Do you think it's possible? Is there some kind of AI magic that can make it happen? Should we even try? Are we going mad from too much power? Cheers, Derek. Thank you, Derek. I admit it does sound like a fun idea. You play a character, but it sounds also impossible. I'm going to play a character. I'm going to define who they are through their actions. And then I want basically an AI to take them over and continue playing them consistently. I think you could probably do it. I, I think if you, I think if you made the model of the character in the game simple enough and then had all of their dialogue generated from that model and you just tweak the model, like you didn't actually choose dialogue options or whatever you just like tweak their personality or or whatever until you got the results that you wanted then i think you could get that to where then the game is basically playing the character right and so then you could have another character and have the game playing the first character and have them interact you know it just occurred to me you could if for having that character make decisions you could do something like okay when it's my character you present me with the situation of do I kill the Rachni Queen? Do, what do I want to mm -hmm. do? I've got Rachni Queen. Do I kill or not kill? And then in the sequel, I'm playing some other character. And it's my job to um, track down the Rachni Queen. You know, not, not literally the Rachni, but some thing in the world that presents a similar situation, right? And so then you have the player the player's former character come in and repeat the decision they made in the previous game. And so mm, you have to right. deal with the consequences of something. You just, well, that's what you decided the last time your character was in this situation. So they're going to do it again. And now you're in somebody else's shoes and you have to deal with it. Like if yeah. you're in charge of yeah, protecting like the Rachni Queen or whatever. Yeah. So I do think it could work. That could actually be super interesting. Yeah. Although I don't know that Bioware should be entrusted with it. And as we said before, maybe sequels for games isn't such a good idea. Right. <laughs> right. That would be an interesting thing to um, have a game that deliberately switches perspective. And you have to kind of live with the things you've done in the past as another character. Like, if you're just a selfish asshole you know, as the first character, <laughs> then, right. You know, then you reach the you end of the, that character. You rip off the, you rip off the, the shopkeeper. And then the next time around, you're playing the shopkeeper and you're just like, Oh no, this trick's going to come through here and steal all my stuff. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. So you have to deal with the consequences of your earlier shenanigans. And then like it's... the outcomes from your first playthrough could be the objectives from, for your second playthrough. It's like, okay, if you don't, get it so that this thing happens then you fail right you have to keep trying until you get the thing to happen that you already chose to happen in the other playthrough right or you've already set yourself you know your character chose to kill the rack knight queen and now this other character you're playing as has the job specifically of protecting the rack knight queen and you already know canonically you're going to wind up in a situation where the other character is going to kill her and it's like oh right damn it no, I have to through be... your the Rack Knight Queen and man, that's just bad feeling. <laughs> exactly. Um, I noticed I just butchered this next email. There's no dear diecast, and there's no it's a, okay, it begins this way. Happened to be watching some random Twitch streams. That's clearly we began 
in mid-sentence. So I have failed this person at, at copy and pasting their text. I apologize to you, Amstrad00. I'll see if I can fix it for the show notes, but for now we're just going to have to deal with my butchery. Happened to be watching some random sh Twitch streams and stumbled across people playing Dead by Daylight, which self-describes as a multiplayer 4 versus 1 horror game. Um, just jumping to the, um, to the question, are you guys familiar with this game or have you given it a try? I'm interested in your thoughts on the various killers they've adapted. Michael Myers, Leatherface, Freddy Krueger, Ghostface, blah, blah, blah. Um, Amstrad 00, thank you for the question. To answer it, I love watching Dead by Daylight. I've watched a lot of it. Um, a few years ago, there was a guy that was doing Resident Evil. Uh, I was watching Games Done Quick, and there was a guy doing Resident Evil speedruns named Pessimism. And I found him to be an immediately captivating personality because he reminded me so much of dudes that I grew up with. It feels like somebody plucked a redneck out of my childhood and dropped them into the world of 2020. Wow. And, I mean, in terms of accent and just the style of humor he does, um, and just the banter he has with the people on the stream, it's like he, it feels like he's doing an entire generation of humor that's like, you know, he, he's young, but he feels like he's on the wavelength with my generation and not on the wavelength with like millennials. And his accent is is also like an accent you don't hear very often. Uh, the vast majority of streamers are just have that sort of neutral American accent and he's got a very pronounced Southern accent. So I got really into him just because he was so idiosyncratic and he played a lot of Dead by Daylight and he was real good at it. And I, it, it is one of the most fun games to watch somebody play either as the hunted or as the the killer um the game the game sort of keys into a lot of horror movie tropes you know that you know the trope where like oh the the young girl is running away from the killer and he's walking yeah yeah and she's running and yet somehow you know she doesn't get away from him even though she's sprinting at full tilt and every time the camera cuts back to him, he's just at a steady walk. And you're like, what? Yeah, it's a that, nightmare kind that, of thing. Right. You, that works when you've got the cameraman on your side and you've got camera cuts to hide behind. But how do you make that work in a video game? And the solution is just make him really tall. Like he's generally <laughs> seven and a half feet tall. So his leg strides are huge. But the other thing is that the, he will beat you in an open foot race. He's just 10% faster than you. Right. But when you go, like there'll be a, you know, the classic horror movie thing of, oh, here's a shelf of crap, right? And you run, you run past it and then you knock it down. So it's in his way. And that sure. slows him down. But that's a one-time thing. You know, you can't knock that shelf down every time. <laughs> like you can only knock that down once. And now it's blocking that particular route. So mm. that's really fun. And you can go through a window, climb out a window, and you will go, you know, as a normal, nimble teenager, you will get out real easy. But this giant seven-foot guy stomping around is very slow to go through the window so that's how you escape is you plan this route okay i'll knock the pallet over that'll give me enough time to reach the window i can go through the window and create distance and then and then from there i'll be able to reach this three-way intersection i'll take one of the three routes and hope that you know he'll be far enough behind that he won't see which way i went yeah yeah it is so good. Also, it the bad guy sort of projects red light, especially from his eye, so that you can feel when he's close behind you. You'll see the red light on the oh. ground, so you don't. Yeah, so you can tell when he's about when he's right on top of you. 
and it can freak you out or it can help you make better decisions without you needing to like spin the mouse around 360 no scope it is so good it is so good at getting everyone to behave using the systems of the world to get people to behave the way they should behave in order to enact these scenes okay so watching is kind of like watching a horror movie kind of it is now it's a bit like okay your goal is for everybody to escape um and there are generators around this place and it takes a while to get a generator going you have to repair it right so there are four people there are four teenagers or whatever and he's stalking them and i think you've got to get like four generators working four or five and then that enables the door opening machinery but then you've got to like hold down that switch for a while or it takes the door a long time to get open right hmm. so you have to work together and one of you if you just only care about yourself you will not have enough people to help you get out you can't do it on your own so you need to help each other but when he catches somebody he doesn't immediately kill them he can't as a matter of fact what he does is he takes them back to his one of his many lairs spread around the map and hangs them up on a meat hook huh. and then goes and hunts for more people so you as one of the other people can go back and rescue that person and get them back on their feet and i don't know what you okay. do about the meat hook wound i guess you just put some <laughs> some back teen on it and cross your fingers so it's, it's uh, kind of freeze taggy right so you go back or and help that the person. flag or something right but then you've got you can't like stick together that's unlike left for dead where your goal was stick together the last thing you want to do in this in this game is stick together because that just makes you an easier target you want to scatter so that he can't chase more than one of you at a time and when you're being chased your real goal is to just keep it going as long as possible the longer he's busy the more time he's gonna spend you know the more time everybody else has to get the generators going okay. and to get the door to get the door open or whatever and so that's how you get to the the horror movie let's split up thing exactly yes so you all split up and you all have to do this frantic thing generally in the dark to get like there's always that's somebody trying to get the door open or you know trying to reach this lever or get the thing opened and it's some it's it'll be some simple activity that we always take for granted in our daily lives and do it effortlessly but for this person because of the situation they're in it'll be hard and they're always and you're always like come on get the thing open you gotta get out he's coming he's coming go on to open the oh you dropped your keys you ass come on <laughs> you know that moment in a horror movie and it creates oh, wow. that yeah it creates that feeling where you know he's getting close but you also know the generator's about to sputter to life like i really don't want to walk away with it at you know 97 percent repaired so it encourages you to just like keep doing this for as long as possible it is brilliant it is a utterly brilliant just a a masterwork of game design released five years ago yeah and the, over the years they've released more dlc for like oh here's our freddy krueger ripoff and here's our um scream character I, for, I don't know what you call the bad guy from scream that mask in the black cloak here's our version of that you know and they add survivor i don't understand i think different survivors have different i've never figured out the survivors thing but it feels like i see people um sort of thinking about their survival choices so i guess like maybe they have different stats or abilities maybe some of them are faster or fix things more or whatever i'm not sure because i think you have to own the game to understand it mm. all right i i spent too long on that anyway yes i love Dev dead by daylight i've never played it but i admire it as a masterwork of game design here's the next one good day diecast so i was rummaging around my <coughs> Oh, I apologize to all of Australia. Good day, diecast. No, it's 
G'day. So this is definitely, you know, an Australian. G'day diecast. So I was rummaging around in my attic recently and found a box containing no less than 11 floppies for a single game. Monkey Island 2. If ever there was a game worth 11 floppies, that was it. Of course, nowadays we have CDs which can hold hundreds of floppies of data. So I was wondering, how long do you think? it? Is, okay, you're making me do this. You're making, by writing in Australian, you're, you're making me want to do a horrible, racially insensitive Australian accent. How long do you think it'll take for games to reach a terabyte in size? Vale, Tim. I hope you're Australian, Tim. Ah, uh, so this is an interesting question to me because I, I've been saying for years, I think games are done getting bigger. There's no reason that they need to keep getting bigger. What are you going to add? Bigger texture sizes? We've, their textures are already so big. We already, we already have so much detail. The, we're way past the knee of the curve. And now making it take four times as much memory will create a barely perceptible improvement of quality. So I think we're done growing. And I've been saying that for almost a decade. And I've been wrong for almost an entire decade. The program grows to fill the size allotted to it, I think is how it goes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you just set a limit. I mean, that that's probably a better way of thinking about it. I think you're onto it, Paul. This has nothing to do with, you know, how somebody probably sets a size target. And then the artists will just fill that. It doesn't matter. If you say, all right, keep the game under 10 terabytes, then... They'll make a game that's 10, that's, you know, nine and a half terabytes. Um, well, I mean, they're going to make a game that's 12 terabytes. Yeah. So, so what's I, the biggest I, game that you've, you've played so far? I think a hundred gigs. I think, uh, wow. I think there's an MMO. Maybe it was destiny is destiny up to a hundred gig. It was something that had a lot of expansions and just mm. every expansion is just another 20 gigs of content. Right. The biggest one I've installed, um, or I, I've uninstalled from my computer because I didn't install it, was Fortnite, and that's 50 gigs. Right. Oh, yeah. Fortnite's always adding more content, and there's, you know, a few gigs here, a few gigs there. It adds up quick. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's something I never kept in, took into account, is just adding more content. You know, when I said, okay, I think games are as big as they're, they need to get, Okay, maybe we can't make them look better by just making bigger textures. You know, that's not what people care about. But I never counted the cost of 300 different skins for your gun. <laughs> never occurred to me people would want that. I'm not sure right. people do, but, you know. Right? Well, I don't know. People keep paying for gun skins in Fortnite. I think the people who are into that are very poorly represented on my site. But somebody is somebody's playing these games and putting money into them. Is is there anything that's a terabyte? Like like my whole like home video footage file is a, right around five hundred gigs, I think. I mean, I've got a seven terabyte drive that I use for capturing game footage. So video. And Right, video file, video files of me playing video games for hours on end, and that's that's currently so sitting like, at about five terabytes. So like pre-rendered, yeah, but that's like days and days of footage, right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, I don't record so everything. We're just trying to. I normally, yeah. So I don't record everything. Like I played three hours of Final Fantasy twelve today, and I probably recorded the first 15, 20 minutes of it. And then, you know, I'm just, I'm just dicking around the open world. I'm not going to record all that. Yeah. So if we imagine that there was a game that had, that was in 4k and had a bunch of pre-rendered cutscenes or something, and it was super long, like some sort of final fantasy game, right? Where they have like 4k cutscenes. Yeah. I, I could see right. it getting up to a terabyte without too much trouble. If it's like, you know, an 80 right. hour game and half of it is cutscenes or something. Right. Probably can get there, but you almost have to be trying at this point. Yeah. Go ahead. Take the next one. Dear Diecast, 
Has there ever been a game that made you outright cry? In the emotional sense, I mean. Not because you were laughing at your asses off or something. From Donkey. All right. Well, thanks, Donkey. <laughs> Have I ever cried? I mean, this is this is sort of a... It depends on the person. Some of us are more prone to crying than others. I would prefer to... I would prefer to classify it as like become emotionally affected. Because some people, no matter how sad a thing is, they will never cry. And some people will cry, you know, at the drop of a hat. Hmm. I personally, I've gotten choked up over many, many games, but I have never wept over, you know, in real life over a game. I thought, I mean, as ridiculous as Final Fantasy X is, I got a little choked up there at the end when, um, well, the thing happened at the end. I thought, right. yeah, that, that was a powerful moment. It was both ridiculous, but also deeply affecting. So but neither of us have played that Dragon Cancer. Uh, which is no the, the classic makes you cry game, right? No, I could, I would not be able to play that. I am very, I am personally very sensitive to bad things happening to children. In, uh, I won't watch a movie about like if there's a horror movie, I'm fine. Okay, put everybody up on meat hooks, chop their heads off. I don't care. <gasps> There's a kid in danger. I don't want to watch the movie anymore. Even if I know, you know, stepping outside of the movie, I absolutely 100% know this rated R movie is not going to harm a hair on this kid's head. They're just going to right. menace the kid. I, I absolutely know this kid will be fine by the end of the movie, but I don't, I don't want to, I, I can't handle that. The, the one exception is, I, I, is it really an exception? is aliens and that movie whew, I, I saw that movie before i became became a parent which is probably why i was able to get through it since i've become mm. a parent my parental instincts are too powerful and the idea i saw footage of that dragon cancer and it it stressed me out it's not so the, it's not the kind of game that i'm looking for when i'm when i'm playing games i, I don't play many story games so uh, right. I've never, I've never cried in response to a game doing something that was trying to get me to cry. However, uh, there was one time, and I think I may have shared this on the deckhouse before, when I did uh, burst into tears crying because I was playing Privateer. This is back in like '92 or something. And oh, wait, so you would have been a kid? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was maybe eight or ten or something. And uh, I was playing Privateer, and I had a, uh, I was doing a cargo run, and I had, my parents only gave a certain amount of time to play the computer. I think it was like an hour a day, and so I oh, sat right. down at the beginning of my hour, and I uh, started this long cargo run. And you've got to go through through all these jump points, and so like you go through a jump point, and then you wait for like thirty seconds or whatever while the computer loads the next zone, and. Uh, then you you know you go to the next sector and then you have to load the other CD so that it can have access to all the other data because it's not going to load all this on your your hard drive. What are you crazy? It's like you know a right. megabyte hard drive or whatever. <laughs> right. And uh, so I got all the way to the other end and I was going to go. I was going to sell my cargo and I looked at my hold and I didn't have my cargo. Like I'd forgotten to buy it right at the very beginning. And so that was. Not only was it a cargo run wasted, but it was my entire hour of computer gaming for that day wasted. And it just crushed me and I, I burst into tears. I ran into the other room, told my mom, and she's like, oh, well, it seems like this game's making you very emotional. Maybe you shouldn't play these games anymore. And that made me cry. Right. Oh, I've had this thing. And so now you're going to use that as an excuse to take away this thing that I wanted. That makes it even worse. Oh, that's so painful. So that was, I think that's the only time I've really cried playing a video game. Uh, there have been a few other ones and I can't remember, I've, while you were talking, I've been scrolling my Steam list and I can't find, I know there are several games that like F Final Fantasy X have gotten me choked up at the end where there was some poignant moment or some great turn or just a really good ending. And I can't remember any of them. And I'm not finding, like, I'm just, like, trying to brute force my way through this by just 
scrolling my entire library on Steam, and I did not find them. But my guess is that there are a half dozen games like that. Rhyme got close, R-I-M-E, uh, and that was, it was very Miyazaki art style and uh, has a very sad story. It doesn't really tell the story, it, it's completely visual, um, but that, you know, that got me choked up at the end. It wasn't, I wasn't crying, but it was like, oh, hit me in the feels. Interesting. I, I wish I could think of the others. I know they're the, I'll, I'll think of them like tomorrow. I notice as I get older, I'll have more searches that just have these incomprehensible return times, like hours after the die cast. I'll be like, oh, <laughs> right, right. Saints Row the Third. That's the one that had me cry at the end. When you, when you beat the evil general guy to death with that giant purple dildo, it was just such an emotional moment, you know whatever <laughs> right i'll think of this probably before this post goes live and i'll try and add some examples let me take this last one good day diecast this is so hard for me to not do an offensive australian accent when you do this good day diecast so a few weeks ago seamus mentioned he doesn't like alex being um the fail race guy being so very careful and sneaky and conscious cautious this made me wonder how do you feel about general stealth gameplay do you not care for watching people play things like thief and alien isolation or do you go in with those different expectations thank you and paul for wonderful content veil vale, tim uh i absolutely love stealth games alien isolation didn't really click for me i kind of i don't know what it was about that stealth but it i found it irritating or like the game was kind of wasting my time or like the I, f I forget what it was or i felt like the alien was cheating um or the game was wasted there was something about it that i made me impatient and i did not find scary but thief has scared the pants off of me so many times the thief series um the first three games yeah. all had masterful the, yeah oh all three games have had moments that just absolutely got me going better than any dedicated survival horror game more than silent hill just really really strong and i love playing them it's not so fun to watch i don't feel the stakes of like oh i hope we don't get caught all i want when i'm watching is i want interesting things to happen i do not want to sit there for 30 seconds hiding in a dark corner while skeletons shuffle by and we you know observe their their patrol routes so that we can sneak by them that is yeah, super boring to, watch. to line up right exactly uh that is super boring to watch other people do that it is super tense when i'm the one doing it Whew, my heart will be in my throat the whole time but it, if i'm watching somebody else do it i'm just like go for it dude just get out there and run just go for it. You know, people are watching. Make it good. Keep it interesting. Get out there. Oh, you messed the timing. Now you're getting chased. Maybe duck into this building. Oh, no, there's another skeleton in there. Now you've got two chasing you. You know, come up with something good to do, dude. <laughs> your job. You decided people should watch you video game. Well, that's your job now. Your job is getting rid of these skeletons and, and figuring out how to escape them. Yeah, so it, it doesn't make for very watchable content, I don't think. Uh, I, I also don't mind playing stealth games, but I wouldn't watch them for the same reason. It's like, it, there's no tension when you can, like the, the cost in a stealth game almost always is you have to go back and redo a section, right? So it's your time. Right. But and your you're immersion, watching, you could just like it, skip forward to the next time that he got to this point, right? Or just skip right. forward to the point where he succeeds. So it's, there's no tension there. For me, it's always my immersion. I get into the mood and I just begin thinking in that moment as if I was there. And when you die, you're, mm. th that spell is broken. And I'm sitting there looking at a menu and no longer thinking about, I'm, I'm Garrett the Thief. I'm Seamus the lame-ass video game player. And so that having that spell broken is the punishment for dying in in these games for me 
mm. much more than my time. It is that it is that sense of immersion and that emotional, you know, just when you're when you're when you're on the right wavelength and really into the game and you're feeling uh the tension and you're feeling scared. Directly after dying, I'm never scared. You reload the game, no longer scary, nothing's terrifying. I just loaded. I could load again. No harm done. Does uh, does Warframe have stealth sections? Oh, Warframe does, and they're super tedious to me. I, Isaac's real good at them, but I found that they just made me angry. I was always, I was always like sort of indignant, like, but, but wait, how was I supposed to know that that guy? I didn't know. What, am I supposed to have the wiki open while I'm doing this? I don't know. But Isaac got good at it, so I guess you can get... So I guess the game does give you the information you need. I just couldn't figure it out. Well, there we go. All right. Just a little bit of context. Uh, it has been record highs in in I northern Idaho this week. There's like... Got up to over 110 uh, a couple days ago. And so wow. this is like the hottest part of the day right now. Uh, it's only like 92 out right now, but I am... Uh, sitting with no shirt recording this because it's just real hot. I did not know that. I am sorry. It is well past dark now. And it is begun. And in fact, today was cold for us, if you can believe that. Even though I think we're at about the same latitude, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was like a freak hot spell. Uh, all the locals are like, it never gets this hot. This is like, this is record breaking all the time. So Right, it, above it 100. That's like gets Arizona. Above 100. Yeah, it's yeah, like it, it was above 110. It was just crazy. Well, then let's end the show so you can go get some ice water or something. Mm, it's also some ice cream. It's also it's cool yeah. watermelon. It's also July 3rd as we record this, so I can hear outside the the day before fireworks going off. You know, everybody yep. setting off their private fireworks. I can hear them popping outside. You know, we live on. We're top really looking of the forward. Hill. This is the first yeah. time we've lived somewhere where you can actually set off fireworks. And so we're we're quite excited. Oh right, you lived in you lived in California as a tinderbox, and now you can, you're not going to burn yeah. down well, Idaho. And, and then we lived in in up in Seattle, which of course that's all restricted. And then we lived in Japan, and you can't even get explosives in Japan of any kind. Yeah, but then you get out there in Idaho, and the, yeah, they're they're technically not allowed here, but nobody enforces it, and nobody cares. Hmm. Here, there's like, it's open carry, and there's like a fireworks stand right next to the local grocery store. Nice. Nice. Uh, yeah, so um, if you heard any popping in the background, that's it. It's the it's the pre-celebration fireworks. We live up on a hill now. I wonder if we're going to be able to see the big city fireworks. <gasps> the municipal display? The municipal display. All right. Thanks so much to everybody who sent in questions. Those were good questions this week. If you've got a question for the show, our email is diecast at shamesyoung.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. Say goodbye, Paul. Good eye, mate. You know what after the credits i'm gonna read this one in my terrible <clears throat> here we go thrill of stealth good day darkest
So a few weeks ago, Seamus mentioned he doesn't like Alex, aka Fail Race, aka that guy who does survive the hunt. Being so very careful and sneaky and cautious. This made me wonder, how do you feel about general stealth gameplay? Do you not care for watching people play things like Thief and Alien Isolation? Or do you go into those with different expectations? Thank you and Paul for the wonderful content. Vale, Tim. <laughs> now you've got a new ringtone, Tim.